Hi, welcome along to another video. We'll be looking at all the regulars. Bill Gates, Harvard, USA, the UAE this time. And as well some information from Luxembourg and also NASA coming up later. So let's start with Bill Gates. As mentioned in previous videos, there's been a few areas of geoengineering that Bill Gates has been involved in over the years. It's not a recent thing, it's not just based in Scopex, what's currently in the media, or has been in the media this year. It's from an old Facebook backup profile that I had from 2010. And I saw this link, Bill Gates pays for artificial clouds to beat greenhouse gases. From the Times, the UK Times newspaper. There was no image accompanied with it, so straight away my suspicions were that's not on the website anymore. Clicking the link. It's not on the website anymore, you just go straight to the Times homepage. I tried copying the link into a browser, and that's the link because of Facebook creating its own link for the link. So right clicking the link gives me the option to inspect. Depending on your browser, it might say look at source code, inspect the elements. All it means is, is that you're going to look at the code that creates the post. In that, once all the code for the page appears, found the link, right click, copy the link, and I get a much more logical link. But it's still got the Facebook ID attached to it, shown there in red. So deleting that, I end up with the actual link to the original story. Onto the Wayback Machine, search for the link, the clean link, because obviously it's not going to find the one with all that Facebook stuff attached to it. And we get some hits. Now the only one I found available after checking about 10, 20, maybe 15 then, <laughs> was the second one in 2010. But the recent ones, for example, in 2021, 2020, if you click on them and follow the links, the link isn't available and it takes you to the Times homepage again. As you can see there, it's loading and it doesn't load and it tries to redirect you. So on the one hit from September the 24th, 2010, where we can find the article, the link to this and all the other links are in the info section of this video. On May the 8th, 2010, in the Times, the Sunday Times, Bill Gates pays for artificial clouds to beat greenhouse gases. The first trials of controversial sun shielding technology are being planned after the United Nations failed to secure agreement on cutting greenhouse gases. Clearly, we know that it's not the first trials, but it's the mainstream media. Come on, give them a break. Bill Gates, the Microsoft billionaire, is funding research into machines to suck up 10 tonnes of seawater every second and spray it upwards. This would seed fast banks of white clouds to reflect the sun's rays away from the earth. The British and American scientists involved do not intend to wait for international rules on technology that deliberately alters the climate. They believe that the weak outcome of December's climate summit in Copenhagen means that emissions will continue to rise unchecked and that the world urgently needs an alternative strategy to protect itself from global warming. The article goes on to talk about geoengineering, various types, then it mentions a study last year calculated that a fleet of 1,900 ships polluting the sea. Sorry, it doesn't say polluting the seas. That's my bit added in. Sorry, um, where were we? 1,900 ships costing 5 billion could arrest the rise in temperature by crisscrossing the oceans and spraying seawater from tall funnels to whiten clouds and increase their reflectivity. Full stop. So just to comment on that, 1,900 ships and their fueled how? So, silver lining. A research body in San Francisco has received $300,000, £204,000, from Mr. Gates. It will develop machines to convert seawater into microscopic particles capable of being blown up to the cloud level of 1,000 meters, 3,000 feet. This would whiten clouds by increasing the number of nuclei. So remember, Bill Gates' statements this year, he's not involved in projects trying to block out the sun, but he has been over the last 12 years though. We covered this in the last video, 
it's happening but it's not happening they're doing it but they're not doing it people are getting paid but they're not getting paid you know usual sort of story oh and let's not forget the bypassing governments and regulation just mentioned so it's not governments that are trying to go past international rules it's British and American scientists involved do not intend to wait for international rules on the technology that deliberately alters the climate. They do not intend to wait. That's in 2010. They're just going to do it. They're not going to wait for any kind of regulation. So you understand how dangerous this was back then and what that means then 11 years later. Stephen Salter, Emeritus Professor of Engineering, design at the University of Edinburgh said that there was no need to wait for regulations because the trials would not add chemicals to the atmosphere. But Sir David King, former chief scientific advisor to the government, said that experiments with potential consequences beyond national borders needed international regulations. So in 2010, no need to wait for regulations and in 2021, with Scopex, it was announced that they were bypassing all organisations in Sweden, including the Swedish government, to carry out their experiments. And they were called out on it, they were found out. So there's a little bit more information for you to add to your Bill Gates isn't trying to block out the sun database, honestly. In America, still haven't worked out that the UK is no longer in the European Union. So the link is in the info section, but can't tell you what the article is about. What's up with the weather with Jordan or Jordine? Can we control the weather? So to answer that, yes. Over to the United Arab Emirates. Weather, rain, dust storm alert issued for today. This was for May the 20th, two days ago. Last weekend, the UAE saw heavy rainfall thanks to continued cloud seeding efforts. Tells you everything you need to know about that, doesn't it? Luxembourg. The Democratic Party of Luxembourg has asked a parliamentary question towards an international ban on geoengineering. The MPs have asked the concerned minister what the government's position is on the subject and what is being done to prevent a country from using this technology with global impact. So it's great to hear that the Luxembourg Parliament are paying attention to this and the wording is international ban. It's not, let's have a chat about this, what's going on. It's towards an international ban. Let's be clear about that. Harvard. Nice picture there. For an article that's talking about solar geoengineering, you think they could have come up with a much more obliterated sky than that picture, really. Let's face it, we've all got hundreds of pictures that are much worse than that one. Should have asked some of us, shouldn't they? Have you got any pictures of the sky spray now, please? nice big bold letters just in case you can't get it model shows solar geoengineering may be surprisingly effective in alleviating impacts of global warming on crops just a quick warning if you do go and read this article it's full of neuro-linguistic programming okay one of your clues is there surprisingly effective surprises are nice right they remind you of birthdays and things don't they and nice gifts the gift that keeps on giving okay so obviously Harvard have had to take a step backwards with the Scopex cancellation. And now it's all back to talking about computer modelling. So the neuro-linguistic programming is not a fix-all for climate change. Solar geoengineering is not a fix-all for climate change. They're minimising the intensity of it. It's one of several tools. Minimising the intensity of it. As in, it's just a small part of it. Solar geoengineering, it's not a fix-all, it's just a small part. It's one of several tools, so it's just a small part. It's small, it's very small. It's engineering the climate, but it's very small. Much less is known about how solar geoengineering could affect the ecosystem. So, therefore, more research is needed, isn't it? And, as you know, David Keith of Harvard, that's all, all he ever comes out with. More research is needed. We need to do the research in case we need to apply it. So and to pick up on that may be surprisingly effective. Again, you know, surprisingly effective. Surprises are nice, like birthday gifts, right? Names to keep an eye on. And this is a recent article. So the research, a collaboration with Norwegian Research Centre, Norwegian University, 
it would suggest that Norway should really keep an eye out on what's happening after the cancellation in Sweden. There's some Norwegian involvement there. The chances are Scopex could very easily find itself in that area next door to Sweden. You've also got Boulder, Colorado, Seoul and the Chinese Academy of Sciences. So Harvard are working on solar geoengineering technologies with the Chinese Academy of Sciences. Now I imagine this is a bit like the Americans drinking tea with the Russians on the International Space Station. But I'm pretty sure the current rhetoric from the American government and a lot of people in American society is that China is the enemy. So why is David Keith, Harvard, in America and the National Center for Atmospheric Research in Boulder, Colorado, working with the Chinese Academy of Sciences? American politicians really, really need to decide who their enemy is. So, David Keefe, as far as he's concerned, policy makers need to consider how emission cuts might be supplemented by specific local adaptions to help farmers reduce the impacts of climate on agriculture and by global actions such as carbon removal and solar geoengineering. There's your authority, eh? Policy makers need to consider not can you consider, would you be willing to consider, would you mind looking at this and considering, no, you need to consider. You b policy makers are being told what to do by David Keith from Harvard and they need to do that on solar geoengineering. So the narcissism levels of this guy are really hopefully becoming clear to most people when you talk about Bill Gates being a narcissist, etc., etc., you know, be very aware. You've got people like David Keith, Elon Musk. There's other people running around that are just as frightening and just as dangerous, doing some really dodgy, horrible things. Over to the Arctic Institute. Still relating to Harvard and Bill Gates, then I guess. Sami Council resistance to Scopex highlights the complex questions surrounding geoengineering and consent. The article basically covers um, the information from a month or so ago. We've covered that in previous videos. Over to India. Cloud seeding, not a viable solution, says the state. The state government on Tuesday informed the High Court that there are many practical difficulties in using artificial rains through cloud seeding to douse the forest fires. The response comes after the court asked the state to consider possibilities of artificial rain to douse the flames. Now we often cover India and its weather modification activities, but what's interesting about this one is, is that it's actually taking place in court, that they're having to do court cases. And that's the standout information from this article from India, is that this is all being done via the high courts. It says what sort of issues this subject has around it. Over to Taiwan. Taiwanese urge to conserve water amid drought. The Water Resources Agency took advantage of showers on Tuesday afternoon to launch cloud seeding at three local reservoirs, hoping to increase rains in the watershed. The Council on Foreign Relations, many of you will be familiar with them. When assessing geopolitical risks of geoengineering, don't assume the future will look like the past. <laughs> oh lordy. Attempting to shut down discussion of the potential weaponization of geoengineering is unwise. Joshua Horton and David Keefe have taken exception to the argument that solar geoengineering might potentially be weaponized in a future climate arms race characterising it as fantastical concerns regarding nebulous threats. However, attempting to shut down discussion of such a potential scenario is unwise. CFR have gone rogue. Over to America, being informed again, like you were a couple of months ago, that scientists are seeding clouds in eight states stricken with drought. So eight states are having their weather modified. NASA. NASA mission seeks to understand bright, night-shining clouds by creating one. In the image there, that's a time-lapse of the Super Soaker 
launch. Three rockets launched with the mission, two using vapour tracers to track wind movement, and one releasing a water canister to seed a polar mesospheric cloud. The green laser beam visible at the top left is the LIDAR beam used to measure the artificial cloud. What has attracted a lot of interest in these clouds is their sensitivity. They're occurring just on the edge of viability in the upper atmosphere, where it's incredibly dry and incredibly cold. So space physicist at the University of Alaska, Fairbanks. What else is at the University of Alaska, Fairbanks? Can't remember what it's called. Um, so the standout thing there, of course, is what has attracted a lot of interest in these clouds is their sensitivity. So they're acknowledging that these clouds are extremely sensitive and they're going to manipulate them by seeding them. So it's probably best we just leave it there. Look after yourselves. See you next time.